Guess who's back? Back again. And no, I'm not talking about Slim Shady. I'm talking about the 3AC crew. We've got Suzu and Kyle Davies back in action on crypto Twitter. Um, and let me tell you, it has been quite the adventure for them. I'm not sure if they expected to come back and for everyone to forgive them. I knew that, you know, I'm sure that they knew that they would face uh, some tension in the space, but I don't know if they expected to receive as much tension and pushback from the CT community as they've been getting. Um, for those of you who don't know, 3AC blew up when the whole Luna thing uh, went under, uh, and it just absolutely demolished basically what was the entire leverage market uh, in the crypto space because they took out lots of loans from people um, stating that they were using capital that really wasn't liquid capital that should have been posted for collateral. Sometimes people are saying that it was rehypothecated uh, re uh, capitals, meaning that they were pledging assets that were already pledged in other loans that they just didn't disclose to the lenders. Um, so there was some fishy stuff going on there. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I put out a video and touched on a thread that Suzu put out, which was like really his first big thread that we got uh, since the whole 3AC explosion happened. Um, and he has this way of like, Suzu that is, has this way of talking about stuff in a very philosophical, story-oriented way. Uh, I mean, of course, that's what that thread was. I'm not going to cover that whole thread. If you guys want to check it out, I'll link it below so you can see it. But again, we covered this in a previous video. Uh, but now they've basically been putting a lot of the blame on FTX. Um, and if saying that, you know, they, they called the, they called the, the whole thing here and that they knew that this was going to happen and that there was some bad blood between them and Almeida and Sam Bankman freed. Uh, and that's a lot of what they've been talking about on Twitter. Now, most people are coming out and they believe that 3AC, the 3AC crew, so Suzu and Kyle Davies are using this as their redemption arc to get back into the good graces of the crypto community. Uh, and again, that's been a lot more challenging than I think that they thought uh, things would be. I don't know if, again, I don't know if they thought they would be able to stroll out here and for everyone, you know, to be roses and rainbows, but uh, that is not at all what has happened. And I'm just kind of curious. I want to get your guys' two cents on how you feel about 3AC. Now, I want to go over some tweets that we've gotten since the whole first thread, basically, from Kyle and Sue. Um, and this is kind of the position that they are taking in the space currently. And that this tweet from Kyle Davies kind of sums up what they're talking about. So Kyle Davies says, we are, we're all playing poker against the house while they took a look at our cards and are and used our money to bet against us. And he quote tweets a tweet from Sue who says, wait, so Almeida's Dan Friedberg's previous business, Ultimate Poker, was literally looking at clients' whole cards and then used that to steal money from them? So if you guys didn't follow this, Dan Fried Friedberg was a guy on the FTX team um, who was previously ran a poker business that was alleged to be cheating and looking at the players' cards, and then the house was essentially betting against them because um, they knew that, you know, when they would have the upper hand and things like that, so they were cheating in poker. Um, and this same guy was working for FTX, and so... Everyone is saying that, look, Almeida was using the data that they were getting from FTX to know where people's positions were so that they could position themselves. So this is kind of interesting because whether you are in favor of Kyle and Sue or not, there's a lot of information that I think we can get from some of the tweets that they've put out. It's sort of like the insiders are fighting and going at each other's throats, which, again, us as the bystanders can kind of step in and see now. We can get a lot of the information of how things were working behind closed doors. And this is something that is sort of undeniable, is the Dan Friedbergs or Friedbergs, I'm not sure how you say his name, uh, but that he obviously wasn't a straight shooter from the get-go. When FDX took him on board, he already had some dirt. So, you know, the fact that it's kind of comical to me because the fact that Almeida literally had all of the advantages. They had basically unlimited leverage. Um, they had the ability to leverage up without having to worry about liquidation because if you remember, um, the, the whole model that FTX set up prevented Almeida from getting liquidated. And we don't know exactly what that whole leverage situation was, um, but we know that they had an upper hand in that. And the fact that they were able to basically look at everybody's positions, leverage up the way they had, uh, and still manage to fail is pretty amazing. Now, getting back to Kyle and Sue, uh, it's been, again, a bit of a rough ride. So Sue tweets out, 
You were shilling FTT literally every day while bashing us as salty because we missed it. Irrelevant where you worked. We lost contacts at the time because we were wrong on FTT. How did the Bahamian withdrawal thing happen, by the way? And he quote tweets Zane Tackett, uh, which Zane Tackett was, I guess, a, a part of the FTX sales team. I'm not exactly sure what his direct position was, but he was highly involved in FTX and basically selling their products. From what I understand, if, if, if I'm missing something there, let me know, guys. Um, but Zane Tackett tweeted out, and this is what Sue quote tweeted. He says, it's unfortunate to see Suzu make up stories and attempt to regain standing in the community. I was at B2C2, an Almeida competitor, at the time in question and wouldn't join FTX until 18 months later. And, uh, and then he tags R Salam 7926 was at Circle and didn't join until five months later. So basically they're saying that Suzu and Kyle Davies are full of crap in that, uh, you know, everything that is going on here um, is just a lot of FUD around the FTX community. Now, you got to wonder how much of this is them trying to protect their past, basically, because don't forget, these FTX employees uh, are under a lot of scrutiny right now. So they've lost their jobs and now they have to go and find another job and their reputation isn't exactly perfect right now. So they're going to try to do as much damage mitigation as they possibly can um, just so that their futures don't get crushed by this whole situation. So this is why you see a lot of the FTX employees who are deeply rooted within, you know, in everything that happened. I'm not talking about the people that were sort of behind the scenes that didn't know anything that was happening. Um, and maybe this guy didn't know anything that was happening, but he ultimately was shilling a lot of what FTX was selling. And so for this guy to come out and defend, you have to know where his motives lie. And again, his, in his best interest, it's good if things go down as not so bad. Uh, the things that he did were not so bad. Or maybe he didn't know. In this case, he's saying that we weren't even there at FTX and all this bad stuff broke out. So, you know, don't put the blame on us because we had no role in this. Um, but, you know, it's it's it's... He sort of did. Um, now, we get another quote tweet. So this is from Alex Pack, was the original tweet. And he says, including me, I sat on the story for years because I was afraid of Sam's retribution, which I think was reasonable fear. I mean, read his original tweets about me. They're very mean. Still, my horror story with Sam is small potatoes versus the millions of lives he's hurt today. Now, Sue quote tweets this, and he says, the retribution fear was not unfounded, especially given the power Sam Bankman-Fried wielded. We aren't alone in this camp. A number of players, including prominent VCs, are just beginning to tell their stories. Pre previously, their lips were sealed. The collateral damage extends far beyond the capitals. Uh, or the capital. And then he goes in to talk about this a little bit more. Um, but it's just, again, the idea that VCs had their mouths shut because of what FTX had going on is sort of the narrative that Sue and Kyle are trying to push. Like, look... You got to understand how Goliath FTX was in the space, Sam Bankman freed, and that VCs were afraid to speak up. They knew something was wrong here, but they were afraid to speak up. Now, I don't write that off as, uh, oh man, you know, we forgive you. You didn't speak up, and we understand why you didn't speak up. And I think that's how most of crypto Twitter feels right now. I was like, look, even if it's a tough situation, and, and I'm not denying that this would be a very tough situation to be in. You've got a Goliath like FTX was in the space. Um, and if you talk bad about them, that they could possibly turn around and burn your reputation. But at the same time, I feel like they owe it to the crypto community to at least bring up these situations. I think there's a lot of people that would have fallen on their sides had they brought this up beforehand, before the FTX collapse. And right now, people would be looking at them a lot more legitimately if they had come out a lot earlier and had these negotiations and been like, look, there's a problem here. And I'm not saying, I'm not talking about a tweet or something in the past because I know Sue has brought up some tweets that he put out in the past uh, sort of ridiculing Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX. But again, I'm not talking about one or two tweets. I'm talking about actually bringing it to the forefront of people in the crypto community's attention and saying, look, you know, this is going on with FTX, or there's some fishy stuff happening here, and we need to get to the bottom of what is happening. He would have gotten into the good graces of a lot of crypto um, and earned a lot of trust in that. And I think there would have been people. I think that CZ and Binance would have stepped in and maybe helped uh, because clearly they were not on FTX's side either. Um, so while, yes, they might have burnt bridges to FTX, they still kept a lot of their money there from what I understand. They were still using their services. So... How much did you actually know and 
why are you all of a sudden now wanting to talk about what was going on with FTX and your concerns? To me, this is like, again, it's a redemption arc. And that's exactly what a lot of people in the crypto Twitter space are taking it as. Is This is you trying to get back in the good graces of the crypto community. And I don't think it's working because there's a lot of holes in this story. Now, while I don't think 3AC was the biggest problem we have faced in the last year, I think there's a couple that are the biggest. The most obvious are Luna and FTX. Those are the two biggest things that occurred in the last year that sort of blew up the rest of the space. And and again, while 3AC fell into the middle of that, I don't think they're to go without any blame here. So to say that you were a a victim, basically, of Sam Bankman-Fried and these other organizations that were betting against you, you still were using a lot of their platforms. So you know, you you were sort of a piece of that problem and not to mention all the stuff that went on with Luna where you leveraged up, you know, with assets that really shouldn't have been leveraged or used as collateral. Um, and then you basically, from what I understand, again, this is all from my understanding and the information that I've seen, they were straight up lying to creditors, when they, especially in their final days when they were trying to get some loans. Um, they were going around to everybody saying that they had more money than they did and were lying about their assets to liabilities. So, Again, to me, that is the unforgivable piece. That is the piece that is still in question. Like, why did you do this? Like, why you brought a lot of people down. Instead of you just going under and then admitting that you did wrong, you tried to drag lots and lots of people down with you. And I know that this situation is sort of messy because you got to... You got to put yourself in their shoes because you run a business um, and you know it's going under. And I'm sure at the last, the final days there, they were probably panicking and they needed to get a hold of money. And so this was, they were trying to scramble and basically do anything they could to get the dollars they have thinking about their own business. Um, But a true leader, somebody who speaks or tries to speak like, like Sue speaks. And again, he's a very philosophical. He tries to come out and speak about the better good of the community and all these other things. And, um, You know, while that all sounds very noble, his actions have sort of spoken otherwise. Uh, The things that they have done sort of speaks the other way. Again, they acted in their own self-interest, which I know, again, and I've had this talk before, it's a market, and you got to assume that everybody's going to act in their own best interest, but there's a line there. There's a line that once you cross it, you, and again, for me, 3AC, that line was over-leveraging. They were taking on money that they should have never done. They put way too much money into the Luna ecosystem. And any crypto native, Sue is a smart guy, and I know what they did was super dumb, but I don't take him for an idiot. So he had to have known when they put that money into Luna that they were overexposed to what was a, a stable coin that, again, these algo stable coins have never never panned out. There's not a single algo stablecoin that you can point to that has lasted more than really a year. I, I'm sure there's probably one case of some one-off token that lasted a little bit longer than that, but these algo stablecoins have almost always collapsed. Almost always. And for you to be that exposed to an algo stablecoin, you got to know. Again, these crypto native people, they knew that the risk that they were taking on, regardless of how much they knew about Luna's positions and FTX's positions, it doesn't matter. Even if things were perfect today, they would be overexposed. They put too many eggs in one basket. And then when that basket caught fire, they tried to go and gather up as much other resources and money as they possibly could to stay afloat. That is the blame. That is the the problem that I think that most people have with 3AC and how they handle the situation. And I think if they, I know that they've sort of apologized about some pieces of it. Um, But again, to me, there's been like this sort of finger pointing blame game that a lot of the bigger crypto entities have done. And instead of anyone truly owning up to what happened um, and and they're like truly owning the wrong that they have done, uh, again, it's just been a sort of a, a finger pointing game. And to me, that is the problem with a lot of these entities and a lot of what had happened is if they just came out, admitted that they were wrong and said that, look, you know, what we did was wrong and we owned it. I'm not saying that people would forgive them right away because I almost certainly don't think that that would be the case. Uh, but at least it would show that maybe they're turning a new leaf. Now, I'm a big f- believer in forgive but don't forget. So even if you decide to forgive 
any of these people, and I'm not talking about just 3AC here, I'm talking about any of these guys, because there's going to be organizations that resurface from the same people that blew the crypto space up this past year. They're going to resurface and maybe under a new VC fund. I don't know how it's going to happen, but they're not going to just leave. And so if you choose to forgive them, do not forget what they have done. And keep that in the back of your mind, whether you're doing business with them or um, you're looking at a token that they create or whatever it is, you have to realize the sort of risk that these entities decided to take on and how undiversified they were. Because at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. The entities that were highly diversified and properly are the ones that are surviving right now. The ones who played by the rules, who weren't fiddling with customer funds. And I know Sue has come out and tried to say that, look, we didn't mess with customer funds and all these other fishy stuff. While it wasn't customer funds, it all it was a it was VC funds. You were you were using funds that other people had invested into 3AC, and you you were highly leveraged on that money, probably past the point to where they would agree with. I I think that if they would have told the the stakeholders in 3AC how levered they were exactly, uh, they probably would have disagreed with a lot of the actions that they took. So this fogginess, uh, lack of transparency is what has caused most of the problems that we are seeing right now in the crypto space. And again, I think that Suzu and Kyle Davies fell right in the center of that. Now, while they didn't do some of the other stuff that exchanges and things were doing, uh, they acted, I would say, sort of unethically in their business. And so that is the problem. And that is what they need to prove to people that they are not going to do again. And again, I don't know if this is something that they can ever live down. I, and ultimately, that's up to everybody to decide. And I'm, I still am on the camp of just not really, again, I'm, I'm going to have to see some action out of them. I'm going to have to see some new leaves being turned over, more than just a couple tweets on Twitter um, and you know these philosophical stories or whatever you want to call them. There's got to be more that comes out, some good that actually comes. Because uh, right now, again, the companies that are surviving are the ones that that acted ethically for what we from what we know so far. Now, again, this this whole FTX situation is still fairly fresh, so we could see some businesses that are still around now announce that they are going under. Um, and you know, so there's a lot. You look at Genesis and all these other companies, um, and I, and I don't know a ton on Genesis, so I'm not sure how unethical they were but they were a lender they were a creditor in the space that was giving money to a bunch of entities um, that ended up going under now i know that this is a little bit different because it was caused from contagion from ftx and but you gotta wonder like if these people these businesses are blowing up because of just one entity you know i know that these are big entities or okay i guess you would call it a couple entities have gone under but what were they where is the risk mitigation here where is the counterparty risk assessments you know who are the risk management teams uh, behind these companies that are you know messing up these calculations so badly that they don't have a plan b basically like in 3ac's case it was luna that was their kryptonite luna went under and it drug all of 3ac down with it then 3ac goes under and all these other entities were highly exposed to 3ac you've got your block fi's your your celsius your you know these lending companies that lent them billions of dollars um and from what it, i understand they didn't really do a great job at due diligence now i'm not saying that 3ac made it easy for them um you know maybe they gave them some fudded numbers or some some numbers that weren't exactly truthful or assets that they said were more liquid than they were. Um, but, you know, as a crypto lender, you are lending in a space with a highly volatile asset as the collateral, it, like highly. And the problem, I think, with most of these crypto lenders is that they took 100% crypto collateral in a lot of cases um, where they should have been telling companies like 3AC, like, look, if you want this loan, we want some Hot, cold, or cold hard cash. We want either dollars or we want munis or we want any sort of, you know, like 50% of the collateral you give us needs to be something other than crypto, something that we can convert uh, in the event of an liquidation, uh, just like we saw. So this cascading liquidation event, I mean, you look at all the compounding problems here, and I know this is sort of getting off track out of 3AC, but the whole thing happened because most of these crypto lenders and these entities were counting on just crypto tokens alone. And as we know, historically, 
crypto is not a stable asset. So if you're a lender and you're basically allowing companies like 3AC to collateralize their loans with illiquid crap tokens, this is precisely the problem that FTX caused in the space is that they were collateralizing a lot of their loans with FTT. So they were the Federal Reserve printing their own money money um, that basically had no value behind it at the end of the day and were using that to take out loans. And in my eyes, the lenders are at fault for allowing them to collateralize their loans with these tokens that have artificial market caps, these crypto tokens that are not not good. I mean, we're not even talking about Bitcoin in most of these cases. And even then, even if they fully collateralize their loans with Bitcoin, I still do not think that crypto is mature enough for these lending institutions to be doing this. Like, you need to have another asset backing these loans if you want this to work and to stabilize. Now, 10 years down the road, who knows where crypto's at at that point, but right now, it's just not there. Um, and so, again, I think that a lot of these like lenders, I think a lot of these VCs, the exchanges, they sort of caused, they definitely caused their own problems here um, by leveraging up on highly vol volatile assets um, and at the end of the day, these lenders allowed that to happen. And 3AC, again, I think falls smack dab in the center of this. So I don't think that they can put the blame on any one thing. You know, for, for them to point the finger at Luna, again, you got to rebuttal that with, okay, well, why did you invest so much into Luna? Why did you have so much of your nest egg in Luna? Uh, you know, an algo stable coin that is very new to the crypto space. I know that they're talking about it being around for years, the ecosystem, but it didn't exist like it had the last year um, when Luna was in its prime. It didn't exist like that prior. UST was not near like what it turned into this past year. So again, it's very experimental and they have to recognize that. So they put too much money into that. And now, and for them to turn around and blame FTX in this whole thing, again, you got to wonder if they truly had these concerns with FTX beforehand, why didn't they speak up about it? And why did they keep transacting and using a lot of their products? Again, that is the rebuttal that I would have on that side. So all of this is a problem that they have created for themselves. Now, I'm not agreeing or saying that, you know, like, oh, they are all totally to blame for FTX. I, you know, there's a lot of people that were blindsided by FTX and I'm not blaming those people. But what I'm saying is, is that for Sue to come out and say like, look, we had a problem with FTX before all of this, and we, you know, we wanted to bring it to everyone's attention, but we're afraid to, and this is how things panned out. I, I'm not saying that that didn't happen, but why did you continue on the way that you did? Um, so, anyways, guys, I wanted to have a small conversation about this because I thought it was kind of funny that they were going to come out here and again try their redemption arc. And I'm not trying to say whether I forgive them or don't forgive them, and whether you should or shouldn't forgive them. That is up to you to decide. And I actually put out a poll on Twitter, so if you guys want, go cast your vote on this poll. I'm curious on where most people fall, whether they they do think that they're starting to forgive 3AC or if they absolutely don't forgive 3AC. Um, and again, I can I can see why you wouldn't want to forgive 3AC. I, again, I, I myself am very skeptical of this whole thing because a lot of it isn't necessarily lining up. Um, but I'm going to keep a close eye on these conversations because I think a lot of stuff is going to be surfaced through this whole thing. We're going to find out a lot of stuff that was going on behind the scenes that wasn't transparent before, some things that we didn't know before just simply because the titans are clashing right now. And so when that happens, the mud and the dirt is going to get surfaced, um, and we're going to be able to see a lot. And I'm sure a lot of it's going to be shocking, not that anything that we've gotten this past week hasn't been shocking. I think most people are just like, Anything could come out at this point, and most people wouldn't be surprised. They'd be like, yep, par for the course for how things have been going this past month. Um, but again, wanted to bring this up to you guys, see what you guys thought. Feel free to comment down below. Again, vote on that Twitter poll. If this is your first time to the channel, please like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.